Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm going to do my 2019 Reads Week 1 Wrap Up. So this first week of January 2019, I actually read four things, and that's pretty good for me. Usually I only read about one to two books a week, however these were a little bit short, which is probably partly why I finished so many, and uh, my husband and I do something called Yolaboka Flood on December 31st and January 1st each year, so we kind of celebrate New Year's with this. It's an Icelandic tradition that we read about a couple years ago, and it's actually meant for Christmas. The idea is that you give each other books for Christmas and then you spend Christmas Day reading. We are usually busy on Christmas with family events, but we liked the idea so we do it on New Year's. So we did quite a bit of reading on New Year's this year, which added to how much I got read. The first two things that I finished this week were Monstrous Volumes 1 and 2 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. And this is a comic book series that I had heard about on a couple different channels. I think Night Hunter Books and Kalanadi and maybe also Maya Reads had talked about this series. I gave the comic books to my husband as some gifts, and he'd read them before, and now I finally read them. They are absolutely wonderful. So I gave these five out of five stars. I absolutely adored them, and I can't wait to get the third. It is a very dark, but beautiful, Japanese-inspired, um, almost steampunk art deco art style. It's just really, really beautiful art. And the storyline follows a half uh, monster, half human girl who has some sort of um, deeper old god monster inside of her that keeps escaping and killing people. And this is in the setting of a war between the sort of monsters and humans that the entire world is caught up in, that has been going on for years and years. And the main focus of the story is kind of on all of the trauma and hatred and guilt and difficulties involved in that kind of ongoing war scenario. So it's got a lot of really interesting deeper themes about what it means to be hurt by others and what it means to carry that around as well as what it means to injure others and what that does to you. So lots of really, really good um, storyline as well as beautiful art. I highly recommend this to anybody who can handle a little bit of graphic violence. The third book I read this week was also incredibly good, although a little surprising to me because I'd picked this up just on a whim. It's Trees of Minnesota, a field guide by San Tequila. So this book I picked up on a trip that we took to Voyagers National Park in Minnesota and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to know something more about trees? So I picked up this book which is um, all about how to identify different trees in Minnesota, but it was really, really fascinating. So in the beginning, the author gives this introduction to how to identify different types of leaves, the way that they attach to the branch, the um, kind of edges of them, how many of them there are, these sorts of things. And on each page, it goes over a different tree in Minnesota, talks about some of the characteristics of it, like what color it turns in the fall or what its berries are like, these sorts of things, as well as gives um, a brief little note about the trees, such as uh, how that tree might be used in carpentry or in food or in medicine, or maybe diseases or bugs that attack the tree, or the history of that tree if it's not native to the area, why it was brought over. And it ended up being really educational and really fun and I looked into it and apparently there's a whole series of these books by Stan Tequila and I ordered one on birds because I thought well now I know how to do trees so I want to know how to identify birds. So given how much I learned from this book and really how fascinated I was by it I gave it five out of five stars. The fourth book I finished this week was actually a reread for me. So it was Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, which is the second book in the Murderbot Diaries series. And this book obviously is part of a series that I adore, but it is 
probably my favorite in the series because of how good it is. So I reread this because for Christmas I gave my husband the all of the novellas in this series in paper form since I had just read digital copies from the library and I told him how great it was and he was interested in reading it. So I gave him the paper copies and told him that I would read them out loud to him as sort of a Christmas gift because we like to read to each other out loud and he tends to read to me more frequently than I do to him so it's a little bit of a, <laughs> a special thing I guess when I give him some book that is a favorite of mine that I can then read out loud to him. So in Artificial Condition we're following Murderbot who is this kind of mixture between um, robot and human so it has organic parts as well as um, electronic parts and it has gone kind of rogue in that it doesn't have any sort of governor module controlling it anymore it gets to make its own decisions but because of that it's having to deal with making its own decisions and understanding how to handle the feelings that it has and Murderbot has I think kind of this undiagnosed depression where it just it doesn't want to deal with real life it kind of wants to just um, escape into its soap operas and ignore all of the bad things happening around it but in this book I think it starts to really grow up and say you know what no these things matter and I need to acknowledge what's going on and deal with it so I liked that growth in Murderbot's character and I also really liked um, a secondary character art in this which is just this really adorable full robot um, that Murderbot deals with and this robot is a ship and it is so cute and so innocent it loves humans but it doesn't really understand a lot of things and it wants to be really helpful but it's also very overbearing and I absolutely love the interactions between Art and Murderbot in this book it's really really cute so great action great personal development arc of Murderbot over the course of this book and really cute interactions with Art uh, I've read it before but still second time around five out of five stars so that was my first reading week of 2019. It started out strong and I, I doubt I can read four books that I give five stars to every single week, but I hope that the year continues to have a lot of really good reads and especially getting to some of the things that I've had on my list that look so interesting that hopefully will also be great five-star reads. Hope your 2019 is getting off to a great start too.